right, guys. This is Susie. I'm live at the meat market. Um, I'm at my grocery store, actually, and I wanted to give you guys some tips this morning for how to pick the perfect steak. Um, a lot of times, we don't want to interact with people at the butcher counter. That's how I was when I first started buying steak and buying meat specifically. But in an attempt to avoid that personal interaction, I kind of missed out. And so I want to show you guys why I go to the butcher counter every time now instead of just buying from the, from the pre-selected, pre-packaged stuff. So we're looking right here. We've got some New York steaks. We've got some ribeye steaks. And they all look pretty good under the lights, right? My first tip is for you is to grab that package of meat and move it out from these pretty beautiful lights. Come look at them in the natural light. Because then you kind of get a better sense of how fresh your meat is. My second tip is to always look at the packaged date. So they have a sell-by date, right? And you always want to look at the sell-by date, but they have a pre-packaged date. And if you're looking at the package date, it can tell you when those steaks were cut and when they were put in the package. And to avoid having, see those ones were cut on the 29th. So three days ago, those steaks were cut. But if I just walk over here, I'm walking this way. I already talked to the guys at the butcher counter so they wouldn't judge me too harshly for coming over here. So if I walk over here, I have my friendly Corey. Hey, Corey. Say hey to everybody. So Corey's going to cut some ribeyes for me fresh. He actually said he cut a whole strip of them today. So this is my meat counter, and this is where I come all the time. So we have sirloins, we have beautiful tenderloin steaks, and we have New York strip steaks, and I always go for the ribeye because I'm just a sucker. And when you're looking at steaks, you always want to make sure that you're looking at the marbling. The marbling is the amount of fat that's layered inside of each steak. So as you can see, these tenderloins right here have pretty beautiful marbling on them. Oh, you guys, this is hard. But these ribeyes, see those? Look at the fat layers in there. Those are beautiful, and those are going to cook down really nice and be super delicious. Can you cut some steaks for me? Levi's going to cut steaks. So see this big hunk in the front right there? I'm going to have him slice my steaks fresh. And I want mine, how thick How thick do you think they should be, Corey? I'll go about an inch. About an inch thick. Okay, so to compare that, I always do, somebody's asking me if I do bone-in. It depends, I do love a bone-in steak. For these ones, I'm going to be cooking them on Good Things Utah tomorrow, live at 9 o'clock. Um, so, I want four. Four of them? Yes. So, I don't want them to be bone-in because... I don't want the host to have to deal with trying to cut around a piece of bone, but I do love to cook a bone in steak. If I'm going to be doing it for myself, that's my preference. Um, any more questions while I'm at the meat counter? Shout them out. Um, Corey and the butchers at Harmon's are great. Um, this is where I always come because they're more than willing to help me out. And while we're here, I want to show you guys, they dry age their beef. And dry aging is this amazing process where meat is kept at a very specific temperature and humidity level. You can see they're all labeled the date that they were packed and the date that they're going to be ready. And there is a month in between the date that they were packed and the date that they're ready to go. Um, how long do you guys age your beef? Uh, here it's uh, two weeks. Dry. Two weeks? Uh, two weeks uh, wet age and two weeks dry age. Sweet! It's a lot of flavor, makes it a lot more tender. Hey, why would you pick a dry aged steak? Because it's awesome. Because it's awesome? Yeah. What kind of flavors does a dry aged steak bring out? Uh, it's a lot more of just like the natural meat, you know, it actually makes it a lot more tender. It's definitely the advantage. You don't have to marinate it or anything, just a little bit of salt and pepper. Just accent, that's all you gotta do to those. Awesome. A lot less bread. So, for Valentine's Day, I wanna say last year, my husband and I actually came here and we bought two aged bone in ribeyes, and they were the best steaks I've ever had in my life. We actually smoked them for about a half an hour. And then we turned the temperature up and seared them on the outside, which is the reverse sear that I talked about on HeyGrillHey.com yesterday. So I'm really excited to get some meat and to cook these steaks up for you guys. And I hope those were some useful tips for picking the perfect steak. And if you ever have any questions or comments, you can find me at HeyGrill underscore Hey on Twitter, at HeyGrillHey on Instagram, or www.HeyGrillHey.com. Thanks. See you guys. Oh, reverse sear. Hold on, I have one more question. Yes, I'm gonna reverse sear these. Thank you so much, Corey. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. So, a reverse sear, 
I'm gonna be demoing this method tomorrow on Good Things Utah. A reverse sear is where you bring the steaks up to temperature really nice and slow. I like to do it on my pellet smoker, which gives it a lot of that smoky wood flavor that, that I love. Um, so I'll cook them low for about a half an hour until the internal temperature is 135. We like ours between rare and medium rare. And then I coat them with just this little layer of melted butter and then sear them off and it kind of gives us this caramelized crunch in a high heat pan. Any other questions? Anyway, I'm really excited to cook for you guys tomorrow. I've never sous vide a steak. I really want a sous vide, <laughs> but I haven't justified paying for it for it yet. But I love that you can put the flavors in the bag with the meat when you do the sous vide and it kind of gives it that enhanced flavor. I've eaten the sous vide steak, but I've never done one myself. Anyway, thanks for joining me, you guys. Um, catch me next time. See ya.